this generation. And the victory will be yours in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and tell the Lord what you need this weekend. What the Lord is going to do for you. You see the light, you have his joy, you have his deliverance, you have his healing, you have his dominion, you have everything your heart is asking for. This weekend is a weekend of victory for you. A weekend of great miracles for you. And praise the Lord, you'll see the light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you because of the ministration you've given to us already. And you have assured us we're going to see the light. Light in our heart. Light in our soul. Light in our studies. Light in our school. Light on our pathway. Light of time, life of eternity. Light of salvation. Light of healing. Light of miracle. Light of deliverance and abundance. Oh Lord, I pray that your light will come for everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that all these uh, young people that have been such us so greatly, oh, Lord, I pray the light will shine in their paths in Jesus' name. And all the rest of us who are here for this weekend, oh, Lord, we pray you'll shine bright in every life in Jesus' name. All the powers of darkness are going to be destroyed, and none of them will bother any of us anymore. Oh Lord, I pray that your light in the path of every youth here today will never be the same again. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 32. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass... That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Give me a good amen. amen. Whosoever. What a great promise we have today. It says it shall come to pass. And days is the time in your life. And days is the time in your family. It will be for you. Amen. For your brothers and sisters, they'll have it. For daddy and for mommy, they are going to have it too. In your family as a whole, this deliverance will be yours in Jesus' name. And it says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The people that the Lord will call and the people who respond to that call, deliverance has come for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, we're reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He came to the people. There were young people there. There were children there. There were adults there, fathers there, mothers there. He came to them and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel is good news. It's to tell you that your sins you have committed, that God is going to forgive. It's telling you that those who are lost, they're going to be recovered. The good news is that those who are sick, they're going to be healed. The good news is those who have been on their way to hell. They will turn around, they'll go to heaven. The good news is the grace of God is abundant and will be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. And he has sent us to proclaim the good news to the poor. And then he says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This weekend, there is healing for you. And to preach deliverance to the captives. There are people who are in captivity. And it says that deliverance has come for everyone in captivity. Recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Whatever sorrows, whatever pain, whatever confusion, whatever challenge you bring here tonight, deliverance has come for you. Because it's a supernatural deliverance. It will come your way, your brain will be affected, your heart affected, your soul affected, your body affected, your study affected. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you tonight on supernatural deliverance for you. Supernatural deliverance for for which people? 
for the youth. And if you're a youth here today, I come to rejoice with you. Tonight is going to be a night of celebration. We're going to celebrate your victory. We're going to celebrate the answer to your prayer. We're going to celebrate the deliverance the Lord is going to give you in Jesus' name. Three things before we pray. Number one, the deliverance. Number one, the deliverance. Number two, the dedication. The dedication. Number three, the dominion. Number one, the deliverance of repentant youths. Repentant youths. The deliverance of repentant youths. Number two, the dedication of restored youths. You come to the Lord and he restores you. Tonight is a night of restoration. He will restore your soul. He will restore you into health. He will restore every good thing you ever lost in your life. He's going to restore everything in Jesus' name. By the time we finish here tomorrow, loads of blessing. Loads of miracle. Everything you say, ah, can I get this again? Can I get that again? Everything will be restored into your life in Jesus' name. And then you dedicate yourself to the Lord. If the Lord has given me such a great thing like this, and such great restoration like this, there's going to be dedication of restored use. Number three, the dominion of righteous use. The dominion of righteous use. Nothing will reign over you. You will reign over everything in your life. The dominion you have now, you are going to have it and you are going to keep it in Jesus' name. Number one, tell me number one aloud. The, re, the deliverance of repentant youths. And uh, it's wonderful that you are here. In fact, sometimes when I come in like this and I see you just seated and you are quiet, you have your Bible in your hand and you are responding, I call a Bible verse and you are opening. I say this, if I could find any youth like you in the world, I would say, well, they get 98%. Uh, but you, every time I come here, 100%, 100%, 100%. And you will carry that 100% out of this place everywhere you go in life. The mark you are getting here, you will get it in Jesus' name. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when I'm coming, I see all those uh, young people, they're still outside. Immediately they know that we're coming to open the Bible. We're coming to talk about Jesus. I see them running and then they take their place and everything warm. Quietness. I say wonderful wonderful everybody say wonderful the wonders of god will never stop in your life number one is the deliverance of repentant use you see when god spoke to joel to go and speak to the people he told the people he said deliverance is coming your way deliverance is coming your way but before that deliverance will come there is a step you have to take let's come back to joel chapter 2 Joel chapter 2. As you look at Joel chapter 2, you see what the Lord was telling them. Already he told them, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. There shall be deliverance. This night, there is deliverance in Jesus' name. But look at the, what, what comes before that deliverance. Look at verse 12. It says, therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, that may surprise you. He said, they should be so sorrowful for their sin, that they will say, I'm so sorry I did that bad thing, I'll never do it again. I'm so sorry I went that wrong way, I'll never go that way again. I'm so sorry I did that foolish thing, I'll never do any foolish thing anymore. That's why he said, they should weep and cry and mourn. Then he said in verse 13, rend your hearts and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. He was calling them to repentance. And he said, if they will do that in verse 12. If they will do what he told them in verse 13. Then verse 32 will become a fulfillment in their lives. If you will do what he said in verse 12. I'll say, this weekend I'm going to mean business. I'm not going to allow this weekend to pass by. I'm going to have this deliverance. The Lord has promised me I will do verse 12 and then God will accomplish verse 32 in my life. Everybody say amen. amen. 
And so, number one is repentance. In fact, he didn't only send Joel to the people, he also sent Isaiah to them. And he wanted them to do the same thing. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. He was telling them, what I'm waiting for, I want to deliver you. I want to set you free. I want to heal you. I want to destroy every work of the devil in your life. But I'm waiting for you. Don't waste time. I'm waiting for you to repent. Once you repent, everything will be all right in your life. I said everything will be all right in your life. Look at chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. That's the repentance the Lord was talking about. He said they should put away the evil of their doings from before his eyes and then it's not that okay i repent uh, this weekend on monday i resume that bad thing again said cease to do evil that is you say stop and then you never go back to it again you say i've returned i've come back to the lord i'm not going to do that thing anymore and you will not do them again in jesus name but 17 learn to do well Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widows. He said, instead of opposing other people, support them. Instead of fighting with them, befriend them. Instead of knocking them, he says, help them, pull them out of their difficulty. Instead of stealing from them, he said, give them what you have and take care of them. Then he said, come now in verse 18 and let us reason together, says the Lord. Do your sins be as college? They shall be as white as snow, and though they be red like crimson, they shall be as how? As wool. Then, if ye be willing and obedient, tell me, ye shall eat the good of the land. I'm looking at people that will eat the good of this land. Because the moment we repent and turn to the Lord, then that deliverance will come in Jesus' name. There are, three, there are seven things I'm looking at. Number one, repent. Number one, repent. What does that mean? Number two, renounce. That means if you have been, let's say, somebody has foolishly and ignorantly gone into a society of darkness, a covenant of darkness, and then he has, you know, caught himself and caught the other fellow, and they make this uh, foolish uh, blood uh, covenant, they call it, he says, renounce it. That he is to throw it away. You say, I have nothing to deal with that sin anymore. Number three, refuse. If uh, after you have repented and you say, now I belong to the Lord and God has delivered me, I praise the Lord Jesus is living on the inside of me. If anybody comes to call you again and say, I about that thing, you say, which thing? How about what you used to do together? How about the covenant we had together? How about that walk of darkness? You say, no, I don't have anything to do with that anymore. I refuse. Everybody say, I refuse. Number four, reject, reject. You know, sometimes uh, these uh, people outside there, they say they want to give you a gift. It's something to eat. Uh, they, they, they get people by their mouth. You say if you want to catch fish, they always catch the fish through their mouth. They will put a bait there, and then the fish, you see something, the fish does not know that there is a hook waiting. Not only a hook, there's a boat waiting. Not only a boat, there's a net waiting. Not only a net, there is a kitchen waiting. Not only a kitchen, there is fire waiting. And so what the fish only sees is the bait. And then once he sees the bait, he says, hey, hey, this is food. And this is free. I'm going to get this free food. He opens his mouth like this. Instead of getting only bait, he gets both bait and a watch and hook and then they take that fish it will end in the fire and you see when the children of the devil when they say why don't you have this why don't you have this they know what you want they know what you love and they want to get through through your mouth and they want you to eat their foolish thing their dentists their defilement you say no i reject everybody say reject you reject in jesus name number one repent Number two, renounce. Number three, give it to me. Refuse. Number four, what is it? Reject. Number five, restore. Restore. That is, if you have taken something belonging to other people, uh, that's part of repentance. Some people say, I've repented, I've repented. And what they stole, they're still making use of what they stole. 
and then the person you want to preach to him and say my friend give your life to the lord i am a child of god and then he says uh-huh child of god child of god i about this thing i see on your table in your box and what you stole from that thing belongs to me if you have repented and you are calling me to repent why don't you restore what you have taken from me repentance includes restoration restore restore number five number six resist resist they'll come to call you to their parties and call you to whatever they want to call you to and you know that you have seen the light how many people saw the light tonight as how many people saw the light tonight you saw it it will never leave your life in jesus name they want to call you to darkness and you say no no darkness anymore because i have seen the light jesus is the light of the world i have seen him you will resist resist the devil and he will flee from you number seven return return if you knew the lord before you were born again maybe when you were in the children's church you were born again maybe when you were in your juniors uh, junior classes and then now something happened you went astray you said this weekend i return I said, this weekend, I return. This weekend, I return. And then we'll celebrate with you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22 uh, is telling us about what it means to repent, what it means to renounce, what it means to refuse, what it means to reject, what it means to restore, what it means to resist, and what it means to return, return fully, fully, completely unto the Lord. Job chapter 22. We're reading from verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Peace is coming your way. Thereby good shall come unto thee. I pray this verse will be a part of your life. You wake up in the day, that day good shall come unto you. You are preparing for your exam, good shall come unto you. You have made application, you are expecting something, good shall come to you. Bad things will never come to your life again in Jesus' name. During the session, good things will come to you. Holiday period, good things will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. If you return, God will build you up. He will build your life, build your academics, and build your career. He's going to build you to be a beautiful temple in Jesus' name. Then say, Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. That's the repentance we are talking about. You put iniquity, not just okay, I drop it there nearby so that when the pastor is no more around, I say, Let me look at that thing. Should I totally give up this thing? Maybe I pick it up again, never again. I said, Never again. I said, never again. You put it far away from you. As the east is far from the west, so he puts our sins away from us. And then look at verse 24. Something good is coming your way now. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Prosperity. Prosperity. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. That's, the, that's part of deliverance. All the enemies, they try to knock you, they knock a stone wall. Because the Lord Almighty will be your defense, and thou shalt have plenty, plenty, plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have the, thy delight in the Almighty. And then he says, and thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. All the promises you are making to the Lord this weekend, you'll keep them in Jesus' name. Look at this verse 20. This is something. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light, and the light, I told you, you'll see the light today. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Give me a good amen there. 
Number two, now number two, the dedication of restored youth. After the Lord has come to you, he restores your soul, he restores your salvation, he restores your joy, he restores everything you have lost. You say, ah, look at what God has done for me. He's restored me unto salvation. He has restored me unto healing and health. He has restored me unto deliverance and dominion. He has restored me unto success and victory. He has restored me unto joy, celebration and happiness because of what he has restored taught me to, I'm going to dedicate my life unto him. Look at this in Psalm, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. This is uh, somebody praying to the Lord. This is baby praying to the Lord. And then when you pray to the Lord, he almost said the prayer. Then you remember to say, Lord, restore, restore. Look at verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. There is joy in salvation that somebody who has not been saved has never known. When we have that salvation from the Lord, the burden of sin is taken away. The guilt and the load, condemnation, everything is taken away. And when thou is taken away. How happy we are. How joyful we are. Because it says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It's the salvation of the Lord. It's not a local salvation. It's not an earthly salvation. It's not a church salvation. It's not a denomination salvation. It is a salvation coming from the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm not going to be satisfied until I have the salvation that comes from you. I pray you'll have it in Jesus' name. You see, some people say they are saved, but there's no joy, it's only sorrow, it's only sadness. They say, I don't know why I have to read the Bible every time. They want us to pray, then we have to go to the church, and they're just trying, and they're dragging themselves. They don't have joy in salvation. I don't know about that kind of salvation. When it is salvation coming from the Lord, there is joy. I said there is joy. I said there is joy. You know, some people, or some youth, be a youth, when the parents said, this will and we're going again to deeper night conference center and we're going to go to that campsite we're going to have the word of the are we going again yes we have to go all right and then pack your load then they're dragging their feet they don't have the joy the joy the presence of the lord but thank god i have joy I said, thank God I have joy. Thank God I have joy. Every time they say, let us go to the house of the Lord, I said, that's the best place to be in life. I want to be there. We will read the Bible. We will pray. God will touch our soul, touch our spirit, and touch our body, touch everything. I'm going there. I'm in a hurry. I want to get there in time. And I pray that that same joy will be for you in Jesus' name. He says, restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Isaiah again. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. We're looking at verse 18. Isaiah chapter 57. We're looking at verse 18. In Isaiah chapter 57 verse 18 it says, I have seen thy ways and I will heal thee. You didn't hear that? I have seen his ways and I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. You will not mourn again in Jesus' name. The Lord will wipe away your tears. All the things that made you sorrowful before, the Lord will wipe everything away. Comfort is coming your way. You see, when you put your hands in the hands of Jesus, say, Jesus, you are my Savior. Jesus, you are my substitute. Jesus, you are the final sacrifice. You died for me. I give myself to you. I dedicate. I surrender myself completely to you. Comfort will come to you every day of your life in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this now. We're coming back to Joel. Well, this Joel has a message for us today. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I'm waiting for you. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Are you there already? Wonderful, Joel. Look at verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Everything, all the years, the years of failure, don't worry, everything is coming back. The years of defeat, don't worry, everything is coming back. You know, somebody said, you know, 
I should have finished uh, this now. I should have finished this now. My mates, they are now here. They are now here. You are going to meet up with them. Because it says, I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army which I sent among you. But so to say, and he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Satisfaction is coming your way. Because of restoration, and if God is restoring all that to us, what are we going to do? Number two, number one now, depart, depart. I say, this God bless me so much. See what he has done for me. Because of that, I depart from anything and everything that is evil. Number one, depart. Number two, decide. Decide. That means I've decided for Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. I'm not for Satan anymore. Anybody for Satan there? I've decided for the light of the world. His name is Jesus. I'm not for darkness anymore. Anybody for darkness here today? No. I've decided for Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life. I'll anywhere he puts his feet, I'll put my feet there. Anywhere he goes, I will follow him. That is my decision. Number one, what's number one? Depart. Number two, decide. Number three, declare. Declare. You see, there's some people, they call, they call themselves, they call themselves secret disciples. They never open their mouths. That's why they come to trouble there. That's why they invite them here, they invite them there, invite them to different places. But once you make a declaration, they get back to your community, to your house, or to your school, and then you declare, I belong to Jesus. Everybody say, I belong to Jesus. I'm a child of God. I have seen the light. I am walking in the light. I will never walk in darkness anymore. Once you declare it, all the people that wanted to bring temptation your way, they want to decide that she is now, he is now your pastor, she is now your pastor, and don't uh, you know, go to her with that kind of thing, because she has made declaration. This is where I am. You see, when you make a declaration like that, you want to keep it up, because they know that you are a real child of God. They say, which church do you go to? Well, I go to one church uh, over there. We, don't you know the name of the church? I said, which church do you go to? Deep on life. And the machinos are going to just say, you know, they hide their face. And then they say, I go to deep on life. I go to deep on life. I go to deep on life. No, I go to deep on life. When you declare, they will not be coming to you to introduce a bad things to you. You declare. Number one, you you depart. Number two, you decide. Number three, you declare, number four, you determine that you determine that that declaration I made. And I told the Lord I'm going to follow the Lord until the very end. Every day I wake up, I'm going to be like Daniel. I make up my mind. That is what I'm going to do. And nothing will turn me back. Number five, delight. You delight in the Lord. You take your joy in the Lord. You are happy in the Lord. And the only thing that makes you really, really, really happy, either you are singing the song of the Lord, or you are reading the word of God, or you are testifying about the Lord, or you are over here, and then you are rejoicing with us, you delight in the Lord. Number six, defend. Defend. If, uh, you know, there are people around you that want to make fun of the Bible, or make fun of Jesus, or they want to ridicule the name of Jesus, you are there as a defender of the faith. You will defend the name of the Lord. You say, don't talk like that. Jesus is glorious. Jesus is gracious. Jesus is high. Jesus is our Savior. Without Jesus, nobody can get saved. There's no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. Only the name of Jesus. You defend the Lord. And then number seven, dedicate. Dedicate. That means I come to lay everything on the altar once again. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. We'll surrender in Jesus' name. Point number three now is the dominion of righteous youths. The dominion of righteous youths. You will be righteous. And great will be your victory in life in Jesus' name. You are going to have dominion. I said you are going to have dominion. Because it is the promise God has given to the people that are righteous. We're coming back to Isaiah again. Isaiah chapter 54. 
Isaiah chapter 54, I'm reading from verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. From tonight, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. If they come against you during the day, you will overcome. In the night, in your dream, you are going to overcome. Before you examine, they always make you see. Before you take your exam from today, I pronounce, I declare, I decree. No more of that in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes uh, you, the, the things you have known, and let's say you have studied and studied, now exam is coming, and then when you get to the exam, or something intimidates you, then fear comes, and you are not able to write what you know. And then it's after the exam, so, ah, I remember, I remember. That will not happen to you anymore in Jesus' name. Victory, triumph, dominion is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Because no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue, every tongue, whatever they are called, every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness, their righteousness, their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Says the Lord. The Lord who has made you righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ, he will give you victory upon victory. Triumph upon triumph. All the days of your life in Jesus' name. And this, uh, the, the promise the Lord has given now, that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper, that promise will be yours forever in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. I'm looking at this. Uh, open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Say to the righteous. What do we say to the righteous? It shall be well with him. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with you. Righteous people, where are they? Where are they? It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. You turn to the left, it shall be well with you. Turn to the right, it shall be well with you. You go forward, it shall be well with you. Anywhere you go, say to the righteous, it shall be well with you. You will be well with you in Jesus' name. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. You'll eat the fruit of your labor. You, you know some people, they don't know, they don't know God. They, they, they go for exam, they finish the exam, they have good certificate. After good certificate, then they become sick. After good certificate, then sometimes they lose, uh, you know, a lot of precious things. But for you, when you get that certificate, you will work with it. You are going to eat the fruit of your hand in Jesus' name. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 60. I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise and shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Look at verse 3. The Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons, you'll have converts. I said you'll have converts. Your converts shall come from afar. And thy daughters, your converts who are, who are girls, they shall also be nursed at thy side. And then they shall thou see and flow together. Thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Enlargement is coming your way. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee in Jesus' name. Then I want you to look at verse, look at verse uh, uh, 18. Violence shall no more be had in thy land. Wasting or destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither the brightness of the moon by night. Then he goes on to say, the Lord, But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. Thy God and thy glory, your sun shall no more go down. Your star shall no more go down. Your victory shall no more go down. Neither shall the moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy sorrow, the days of thy mourning, the days of thy sadness shall be ended. Thy people shall also be all righteous. 
they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Now, verse 22. Get ready, tighten your belt. Verse 22, get ready. Something is coming your way tonight. Look at this. It says, a little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That time has now come. I said that time has now come. Are you ready? Where are you? Why don't you stand up and get this deliverance today? Deliverance, dedication, and dominion. Deliverance, dedication, and dominion. Remember what the Lord is saying. Say, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. First of all, you will repent. And when you repent, you say, this dominion is going to be mine. We came here because of you. We're having this program because of you. Because the Lord has seen where you are. He has seen your problem. He has seen your sorrow. He has seen your tears. He has seen all the, all the mourning. And he says, I want to turn everything around in your life. Therefore, you will repent whatever it is that is not right in your life. You know that this is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You repent. You repent. You renounce. All those works of darkness, you renounce them. You refuse. All the invitations of those uh, uh, people that are walking in the dark, you refuse the invitation. They want you to do something bad. You say, no. You refuse. You reject all the things they're trying to give you. They want you to eat this. They want you to wear this. They want you to put on this. They want you to, you know, whatever it is, you reject. And then if you have stolen anything, you say, by the grace of God, immediately we leave this place, I'm going to restore. And then if the devil comes to tempt you to say, why don't you come back? I resist. I resist. You return completely to the Lord. A new day is coming in your life. Day of rest. It's time for you to rule and reign. It's time for you to rule and reign. You will reign over every problem in your life. Every problem in your life. You will reign. You will reign. You will reign. Time to rule and reign. In Jesus' name we pray. The kind of amen I used to hear when there was revival among the youths. In Jesus' name we pray. The kind of amen, the kind of amen, the kind of amen that Satan will say, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I will never come to you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful. Wonderful. Where is Satan? I can't find Satan again. Where is sickness? I can't find sickness again. Where is failure? I can't find failure again. Where is oppression? I can't find oppression again. Because we give ourselves to the Lord. As you give yourself fully to the Lord, all those things, they are forever gone in Jesus' name. Let's bow and eyes closed. Let's bow, let's bow and eyes closed. Now, you want to take this definite step. This definite step. This definite step. And you are saying, today will be the day of my repentance. Today will be the day of my repentance. This is that day. This is that day. That repentance, I'm going to lay everything down. I'm going to forsake everything that is bad in my life. Where are you? You raise up your hand. A new day will come in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Just raise up your hand right there. And while you raise up your hand, you say, I repent. You tell the Lord right there, I repent. Tell the Lord right there, I repent. And then I renounce. All the powers of darkness, all secret cults, all the covenants, break everything right now. I renounce. And then I refuse. Tell the Lord why you are raising up your hand. Tell the Lord, I refuse. Tell the Lord, I reject. I reject all those things that they may come bring my way. I reject. And then I'm going to restore. 
any sin that is a uh, mine that is not mine belong belonging to other people i'm going to restore keep your hand up and then i resist i resist the devil will try to come again and peep into your life. Will you allow me to come back? I resist. I resist. It will never happen again. And then I return fully to the Lord. All my heart, all my soul, all my mind, I return unto the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep that hand up. Keep that hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these young people that today they say they repent and they return fully to the Lord. Receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive, forgive, forgive all their sins. Take all their sins away and bring the joy of salvation unto them in Jesus' name. And then the grace to continue, the grace to live in righteousness of life. I pray, Lord, you grant unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, as they open the door of their hearts now, Jesus come in. Jesus come in. Jesus come in. Be their Lord and Savior. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Now, those who raised up their hands, uh, later our leaders will be talking to you on how they will meet with you and counsel you and all that because something good has happened already. Now, everybody here tonight, everybody here tonight, everybody here tonight, something good is coming your way in Jesus' name. Now, now, dominion, dominion, dominion is coming. Deliverance has come already. Healing has come already. Victory has come already. All of us who are here tonight, mark it down, go and write the day, this the date of today down. Something new is happening in your life in Jesus' name. Now, but first of all, you will dedicate yourself to the Lord. You say, Oh Lord, everybody now, this is not a, you know, if you've done this before, not before, whatever. Everybody now, what did I say? What did I say? Where is the everybody now? Wonderful, wonderful. You are part of this. Something, you are part of this good thing in Jesus' name. Keep up that hand, and as you keep up the hand, it's a sign of, Lord, I surrender. Tell the Lord, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. My life is for you. My time is for you. My soul is for you. My spirit is for you. I dedicate myself totally unto you. I'm not for Satan anymore. I'm not for secret cult anymore. I'm not for any bad covenant anymore. I'm not for darkness anymore. Jesus, I belong to you. Jesus, I belong to you. Jesus, I belong to you. I dedicate, I dedicate, I dedicate myself, my life unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, you've done your part. God is going to do his part now. You will, you will see something right there. You will feel something right there. Keep up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every boy, every girl here tonight. I pray that this good heavenly deliverance will come to everyone in Jesus' name. Epilepsy, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. Oppression, affliction of the enemy, of the devil, pressing them on the bed and pressing them down. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All those bad dreams and nightmares, each day in a dream, and take this other one, I command you right now, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, every pain in their body, every sickness in their body, I pray right now, the healing virtue of the Lord will touch you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray any dim eyesight there, any kind of leg that is wobbling, that is not strong there, any paralysis there, I command right now, healing and miracle will come in your life in Jesus' name. And from today, no weapon that is fashioned against your life shall prosper. You are delivered today. You are set free today. You are liberated today in Jesus' name. Lord, release their success. Release their victory. Release their certificate. Release every good thing in their lives in Jesus' name. 
I pray from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, internally, outwardly, on your skin, in your bone, everywhere, will taste the power of God right now in Jesus' name. Lord, these are your children. Set your children free. Set your children free. Set your children free. And I pray, Lord, that it will be well with them. Lord, I pray the grace to be righteous, the power to be righteous will be given to them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray victory in every life, triumph in every life, success in every life, dominion in every life in Jesus' name. When you turn to the right, there will be success. Turn to the left, there will be success. Move forward, there will be success. Go to a higher school, there will be success. From now till the end of your life, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in Jesus name we thank you Lord because we know it is done in Jesus name we pray